This lesson covers the configuration of network load balancing, and this is done through the Network Load Balancing Manager tool. One important consideration before you start the configuration is the networking consideration for network load balancing. There are two modes available, unicast mode and multicast mode. Now unicast mode is essentially where the MAC address of each of the machines changes to become a shared MAC address between every host in the network load balance cluster. And this is a great configuration, providing you have a second networking adapter in the hosts. Because if you only have a single network adapter and use the unicast mode, well, because they're now sharing the same MAC address, the nodes in the network load balance farm would no longer be able to communicate with each other because they all have the same MAC address. They could communicate with external hosts from the network load balance cluster, but could not talk to each other. So if you have multiple network adapters, then you can use unicast mode. If you only have a single network adapter, you would use multicast mode, which essentially is assigned an additional multicast MAC address for the communications related to network load balancing, but ensures each of the machines can still communicate with each other using their own unique MAC addresses. There is actually a modified version of the multicast, Internet Group Management Protocol, or IGMP multicast. There's a special form of the multicast mode that can help stop network switches being flooded with communications. Now, this does require the switch hardware specifically support this type of functionality. So before you could use this, you'd have to make sure your switch supports the IGMP multicast protocol. So make sure you understand, does your hosts have one network card or two network cards? Because this will affect your configuration. So right now, I don't have any network load balance clusters, but I'm going to say new cluster. So I specify a host that is going to be part of this cluster. So I can point it to itself. And I say connect. So it's now connecting. And I'll say next. It's showing me my IP configuration of this host. And now I can add an IP address for this actual cluster. So this is going to be the IP address of the network load balance cluster shared between all of them. So I want to go ahead and add a new IP address. So this mustn't be used by any host or any of these individual machines that are going to be part of this NLB cluster. I'm going to say 235. This also supports IPv6, but I'm just going to focus on IPv4. So this is now the IP address of this network load balance cluster or farm. I can give it a name. So I'm actually going to call this one iisnlb.savletech.net. And now this is where I select the cluster operation mode. So I'm going to select multicast because each of these machines only has one network adapter. I can specify which ports will be supported by this NLB. So for example, if I knew I was only doing 80, I might just configure port 80. But I'm going to leave that and say finish. So it's now going through and doing that initial configuration of this single box as part of this cluster. That's now complete. But one thing that doesn't currently work is I gave that a name. If I try and look that up, it doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a static host record for that. So I'm going to call this that IIS NLB and then that IP address I added for that host for that NLB cluster. Now I flush the cache. I look up that name again, it's now there. So now I can actually resolve that name. So the next step is to add a second node to that. But actually before I do that, let's jump back to my client and let's just see what happens when I try my iisnlb.savletech.net. Notice it works. So that network load balance farm is working that new IP address with that new name and obviously it's always going to go to Savdal IISO1 because there's no one else added to it. So now I can actually go ahead and I'm going to add a second host to this cluster. So Savdal IISO2.savletech.net. I'm going to say connect. All the same configuration. So it's adding this in and I'll see it change to status converge once it's part of the NLB cluster. So I can now see it's converged. 
So these are now both part of this NLB cluster. I can go and select individual hosts. Now notice this affinity. So there might be some services that once a client is connected to a node within the farm, you want their subsequent communications to go to the same node in that farm. For example, maybe there's some kind of checkout or tracking cookies, for example, that once a client connects to the website, you want them to keep connecting to that same instance of the website each time. So it's affinity single means that the same client would be redirected to the same node each time. But you can configure that as part of the properties. I can right click, I can see my host status, so I can see it's converged. I can stop it, start it, drain any connections from it and stop it. Suspend, resume, look at the host properties, those cluster parameters, the port rules. And if it stopped, I could then edit those. So right now my client, to so see I refresh, I'm now connected to IIS2. So I actually switch between them. If I then went back to my farm, and on IIS2, for example, I'm going to say drain stop. So I said it to drain stop. And now I'm just going to say stop. So I drain the connections. Now I've stopped it. Now if I go back to my client and refresh, it's trying to get to it. It's not going to find it. And then it's going to go back to IIS01. And there we go. I could then bring that back in again. This could be a planned or unplanned. It's going to go back and converge. And then once that's completed, who knows, my client may now go back to it again. So I do refresh. And it's sticking to IISO1, which is fine. And that's really it. I can just add additional hosts. Now, all of this is possible with PowerShell. So if I open up my PowerShell integrated scripting environment, and we're going to use the NLB cluster set of commandlets. So my view is going to load those command add-ons in a second. And I'm going to use the new dash NLB cluster. I specify the interface name that I'm going to use as part of the cluster the operational mode, and then a primary IP address and name for that cluster. So again, let's go to NLB cluster. And I can see I have my new NLB cluster. I'll show my details. So I'll give it that IP address. So 192.168.1.215. The name, so local area connection, for example, host name, and then my mode. I can add additional nodes using the add NLB cluster node PowerShell commandlet. And again, I'm just going to specify which interface, the node name, and the new node interface. And that's it. I'm now adding additional nodes. So I can do all of this from PowerShell.